previously on Avatar. Hey guys, it's Hannah, and today I'm going to be doing the Do I Have That Book Challenge. So I saw people doing this like three months ago, and I of course didn't do it then, so I'm doing it now when it's not cool anymore, but I still... I'm not Mother Gothel, I'm not evil, I promise. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. My name is Hannah if you're new here. So today I'm going to be filming the Do I Have That Other Book Challenge. The original version of this challenge was the Do I Have That Book Challenge which I filmed like a year ago. I think it's been over a year at this point and unexpectedly that video has like a million views and I literally do not know why so many people watched it because I, I thought it wasn't even like that entertaining. It was like seven minutes of me scouring my bookshelves to answer like these questions. But for some reason I think YouTube just recommended it a lot. And um, now it's one of my most viewed videos, which is very strange to me. <laughs> but it's been so long since I filmed that and I didn't know there was a second part to this challenge. And then I saw a bunch of people doing it and I knew I had to do it as well because it was actually really fun to film that first video. So I thought it would be fun to do the second part of this challenge. The creators of this version of the challenge are Keeping Tabs and Current Chapter. So I'll be sure to link both of their channels in the description box below if you'd like to check them out. But I'm very excited to do this. I haven't watched anyone's videos because I didn't want to spoil the questions for myself. And I've only just like screenshotted the questions so I have them so I can read off of them. So I really don't know what I'm getting myself into. I feel like the last one was somehow fairly easy for me, but I thought it was going to be really, really challenging. I think there were only like two books that I didn't have or something like that. But I'm assuming that this time the questions will probably be a little bit more specific and a little bit more difficult. So I feel like I'm going to have a pretty hard time with this, but nonetheless, I'm excited to get into it. So without any further ado, let's see if I have that other book. <laughs> The first question is, do you have a book with a fox on the cover or as part of the plot? Question one, and I already don't know what to do. This is not a good start. The first thing that comes to mind is Wicked Fox by Cat Cho, but I don't have a copy of that book and I don't think I ever had a copy of that book, so don't have that. I can't think of anything else that has a fox in it though. I can think of things with wolves. I can think of things with other animals. <laughs> Nevernight has a raven or a crow. Six of Crows has Crows. Why is the only thing that's coming to mind the library episode of Avatar The Last Airbender? So many wolf things. Wolves. 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 I'm pointing to Twilight. <laughs> that's a snake. Does this have a fox on it? No, there's no fox. I also recently rearranged my bookshelves and they're not like fully organized yet so I low-key have no idea where anything is except for like a couple of books here and there. Um, so this is gonna be even harder. <laughs> Why does nothing have a fox in it? There's a stag in the Raven King, but no foxes. Why are there no foxes? Oh, does Witchwood have a fox in it? Why do I feel like there was a fox on the cover of this? No, there's no fox. Is there a fox on the cover of this one? <gasps> there's a fox! I found a fox! <laughs> I found a fox. I found a fox on the cover of Furthermore. There's a little fox. Do you see the fox? Little origami fox? It looks like it's made of paper or something. It's very cute. Do you see it? You see the little fox? It's a very cute fox. I really didn't think I'd find anything for this. Oh my god. <laughs> All right, question number two. Do you have a book published the year you were born or within a three-year radius? Uh, okay. I don't know. I was born in 1996 and I feel like the majority of my shelves have books from like 2005 and beyond or like 1920. <laughs> so three-year radius might be a little bit hard. Oh, you know what? The Perks of Being a Wallflower. When was that published? Perks. 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 I feel like this was published in the 90s, right? 1999. That's three years. That counts, right? I don't think I can find something that was published closer. I don't think I have anything from 1996 to 1998. This is the closest thing I can think of. I knew this was published in the 90s. <laughs> Question number three. Do you have a book with music as a weapon or magic? Yes, and one instantly comes to mind. Where is it? I moved things around. There it is. <laughs> this Savage Song by Victoria Schwab. <laughs> music is a key part of this story and part of the magic system-ish. It's kind of a weapon. It's kind of part of the magic. Just read it. These books are so good. <laughs> Question four, do you have a series with mismatched covers? One instantly comes to mind and I feel like this is probably the one that everybody chose, but easily. The Diviner series by Le Bobre. <laughs> I still don't have the last book. I don't have King of Crows. I haven't read it yet. Please don't judge me. <laughs> but besides the last two, every single book in this series has had a different cover and it's the bane of my existence. Why couldn't they just make all of the covers match the first one? This cover is so pretty. Why did you do this? I don't like it. I feel like everyone probably chose the diviners for that, but I honestly, I don't think I have another mismatched series on my shelf. Question number five, do you have a book with a shapeshifter? That I do. 
first thing that comes to mind. Clockwork Angel, or the Infernal Devices series as a whole. Tessa, the main character, is a shapeshifter. That's not a spoiler. It's in the very beginning of book one. <laughs> Question six, do you have a book that's signed by the author? I could also pick um, all of the Infernal Devices for that, but I'll pick something that's not Cassandra Clare. King of Scars. I have King of Scars by Lee Bardugo. I went to her book signing for this. It was very fun. It's personalized precious to me. Question seven, do you have a book with a mostly red cover? I definitely do, and I don't know what to pick off the top of my head. Oh, Simon versus the Homo Sapiens agenda. The cover is almost entirely red. I feel like this is a, this is a pretty fair choice. Question eight, do you have a book that has between 287 and 306 pages? I hate these questions. <laughs> ah, let's find one. Probably a contemporary. I feel like they're shorter. Let's see how long Turtle All the Way Down is. What was it, 307? Is that as long as it can get? Or 306? <gasps> Hold on. It's 286 pages, I'm gonna cry. That was literally tragic. <laughs> okay, uh, so something longer than Turtles All the Way Down. Let's try Radio Silence. I feel like this is too long though. 3.99? No. How long is Sadie? I feel like this is shorter though. No, too long. What about History is All You Left to Me? That was upside down. 287? This is 287. Does that count? Yep, it counts. 287 pages exactly. So, there you go. I'm so mad about Turtles All the Way Down. 286 pages? Are you kidding me? Why? <laughs> Question nine, do you have a book where the main character wears glasses? Probably. <laughs> I don't remember anything about characters' descriptions, honestly. <laughs> I could go with Harry Potter, but that's such an obvious answer, so I kind of want to do something else. Does Kath from Fangirl, does she wear glasses? Hold on. Yeah, she wears glasses, at least in the picture on here. I'm gonna go with yes. From my memory of this book, which I read like four or five years ago at this point, and based on the fact that the cover art has Kath wearing glasses, I'm gonna say that Kath, the main character of this book, wears glasses. Final answer. <laughs> Question 10, do you have a book with a title that has the same number of letters as your first name? These questions are even worse than the page number ones. <laughs> my first name has six letters, so we gotta find something with six letters. <laughs> Wait, is Sadie six letters? No. I can't count. <laughs> I am not good at math. God, what's a six letter title? You're all gonna be able to find out how bad my counting skills are, so I'm sorry. I don't know. No. Scythe? Scythe! <laughs> oh my god. Scythe by Neil Schusterman has six letters in the title. <laughs> that was so weird. I was just staring at my bookshelves and then all of a sudden my eyes just gravitated towards Scythe and it worked out. It worked out. <laughs> 11. Do you have a book where cybercrime or technology is an important plot point? I don't think so. <laughs> the first thing that comes to mind is Warcross by Marie Lu, but I haven't read that, nor do I think I own a copy. I think I once had an arc of it, but I think I donated it. I don't think I have it anymore. Yeah, I don't think I have an arc of it anymore. <laughs> but I can't think of another book where cybercrime or technology is like a main plot point. I think I need to rule out the cybercrime part. Technology. Scythe? Does Scythe count? I feel like Scythe counts. I don't know if I'm allowed to pick the same book for two prompts, but I'm gonna do it anyway because I can't think of anything else. Also, I could just pick like The Thunderhead or something instead. We'll go with The Thunderhead actually, hold on. The Thunderhead is literally technology and a lot of the like stuff in this world revolves around like the advancement of technology and how that's incorporated into human life and developed throughout like evolution and stuff and how it's been meshed with human evolution. So I feel like that counts. I feel like Scythe counts. It's dystopian, but it's also kind of like techie a little bit. I'm gonna go with yes, especially Thunderhead. Like you learn a lot more about the world and like the Thunderhead itself and like the tech aspect of things in this one. So I'm gonna say this counts. I'm gonna say it counts. You can fight me, I don't care. <laughs> Question 12, do you have a book written in another language or translated? So I'm assuming that this is like, okay, if I pick something that's been translated into English, cause I don't think I have any books written in other languages, but I do have books that were originally written in other languages and translated to English. So I'm gonna go with one of those. <laughs> Shadow of the Wind by Carlos Ruiz Zafon, translated from Spanish into English. One of my favorite books of all time. Read it, please. It's so good. It's so good. Question 13, do you have a book written by an Asian author? Definitely, I have plenty. First one that came to mind, one of my favorite books as well, The Astonishing Color of After by Emily X. R. Pan. Such a good book, such a good contemporary with a little bit of magic sprinkled in there and it's beautiful, heartbreaking. I love it. I can't recommend this book enough. 14, do you have a book with a moon on the cover? Yes, and I don't know why this just like immediately popped into my mind, but this cover is just like vivid in my head. Also because of the title. 
when the moon was ours. I actually have two versions of this book and this one also has moons on the cover. So yeah, both of these covers have moons on them. I still haven't read this book. I've been saying I'm gonna read it for years and I still haven't read it, but I plan to one day. Don't judge me. <laughs> 15, do you have an illustrated children's book? Yes, I have multiple. The Little Prince. <laughs> this is the one that's just like on top of my stack of illustrated children's books. So we're gonna go with this one, but it is illustrated. It is a book for children in my opinion. I read it when I was little and it is also one of my favorite books of all time. Highly recommend if you haven't read it, you can read it at any age. It's still beautiful, still wonderful. I feel like these videos always just turn into me promoting my favorite books, but like that's my whole channel. Question 16, do you have a collection of myths or fairy tales? I don't know. <laughs> I used to have a little like mini book of like Greek myths, but I think I unhauled it. So I don't think I have that anymore. <laughs> oh my God, I also just thought of another book that has technology in it that I didn't think of before. I'm just gonna show it now, even though that's not the question. An Absolutely Remarkable Thing by Hank Green. <laughs> technology is like a major part of this story. So, I mean, my answer with Thunderhead still stands. Like that one counts, but this one also counts. Also read this one, it's really good. What was this question? I completely forgot. <laughs> Collection of myths or fairy tales? Okay, I don't know. Why did I get rid of that little myth book? It would have been perfect to answer this question. That's not a reason to keep books. <laughs> I have several like short story collections, but I don't think that counts. Oh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Oh, I put it behind here. Yes. Language of Thorns by Leigh Bardugo. Does this count? I haven't read this yet, but um, I do know that it is like a collection of fairy tales from within the um, Shadow and Bone universe. And yeah, see, it's like a bunch of different fairy tales and it's illustrated and everything. So I feel like this counts. This is like fairy tales of that world. Same thing. I, I'm gonna count it. I'm gonna count it. You can fight me. <laughs> Question 17. Do you have a fantasy or sci-fi that has an alliance between different races? Yes, I'm bound to. <laughs> this is gonna take me a second to think. Alliances. Alliances. What has alliances? I mean, the mortal instruments. Like, that's a common thing in those. Oh, you know what? <laughs> Saga, that's the whole plot. <laughs> Saga, my favorite graphic novel, comic series of all time. The entire plot of this story is that there are these two worlds that are at war with one another and they're like different races of um, people. And the main two characters are from each of those separate planets and they're like in an alliance with one another and they're trying to like create an alliance with other people as well. That's like a very generalized sense of the plot, but that's basically the plot of the entire series. So saga, that's my answer. <laughs> also read these because they're perfect. Question 18, do you have a book with a narrow front cover? A paperback that the front cover is trimmed slightly shorter, narrower than the rest of the pages? Yes, and I literally hate these covers. I have two that I can think of. Yes, bane of my existence. We have Fire and Bitter Blue, the second and third books in the Graceling trilogy, and I hate it. Like, do you see this? Why do you do this? What is the point of this? What does it accomplish? I don't like it. I don't think anyone likes it. It just doesn't even look good. But these are getting new covers soon and I'm absolutely just gonna rebuy the whole series in the new prettier covers that don't have this ugly thing in the front. I really don't understand the purpose of it. If someone knows the purpose of it, please explain to me because I just genuinely don't get it. Question 19, do you have a book that includes the first chapter of the sequel? Probably. I feel like this was a thing that was way more common before. I don't feel like books do it as often now, but I feel like the Mortal Instruments might have this. Hold on. I feel like I remember City of Bones, or like the first three Mortal Instruments books doing this when I first read them in middle school. Yes, a sneak peek of an ember, not an ember in the ashes, City of Ashes. Prologue, it has the prologue. Does that still count as the first chapter? I'm gonna count that as the first chapter. It's the same thing. Oh, and it has the first chapter. So yeah, we've got both. So it's perfect. Do you see how stained and old this book is? Oh my God. <laughs> but yeah, we've got the prologue and the first chapter of City of Ashes in the back of City of Bones. So there we go. I'm pretty sure all the mortal instruments, at least the first three did this. And question 20, do you have a book with a broken spine? I don't know. I really don't break the spine of my books. I just don't like the look of it, but I feel like I'm bound to have like one, like something old, probably. I don't have my other paperback copies of Harry Potter in my room anymore, but I know the first, wait, actually, never mind. I do have the first one. <laughs> all right. Here we go. This might be my only book with a broken spine, but my first copy of Harry Potter, this paperback copy of it has a broken spine, as you can see, because I read it a long time ago and my sister read this copy and like it was shared around. My mom read this one. So yeah, it's very old and it has been 
used very well. <laughs> All right, and lastly, there is a bonus question, which is, do you have a book that covers three or more prompts? And I really wanna try and do this, but I don't know that I can. Okay, so I know that I already picked Scythe for a book that is the same number of letters as my name. The title's the same number of letters as my first name. And it also has um, the theme of like technology as one of the main plot points. And ugh, can it fit any other prompt? <laughs> it's not signed. There's no shape shifter. A book with a mostly red cover. The cover's pretty red, right? This counts as mostly red, right? Like, yes, there are these like cream parts, but the back of it is also like this burgundy red. <sighs> I don't know. Does this count? I feel like it's mostly red. <gasps> you know what? Oh my God, I thought of the perfect one. <laughs> we have got this. Where is the second book? Oh my God. Where's the second book? Where did I put it? Where did I put it? Where did I put it? There it is. <laughs> All right, all right, all right. I'm 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 so proud of myself right now. <laughs> we have the Shadow of the Wind series, which I don't have the last book, um, but mismatched covers, so I was wrong. I do have another series on my shelf with mismatched covers and it is translated. And the first book, the cover, is almost entirely red. It's about as red as it can really get. So yeah, there you go. This answers three of the prompts. I'm very proud of myself. I didn't think I'd be able to find one. All right, so there you all have it. That is it for the do I have that other book challenge. I had a great time doing this. I'm pretty sure I answered every single prompt, which I did not think would happen. I thought this would be way harder than the first one. And while the questions were definitely more difficult because they were way more specific, for some reason this was not as bad as I thought it would be. I thought I would have a really hard time with it because it's been a while since I've been like familiar with my bookshelves and I just rearranged everything. Also my memory when it comes to like what's in the books <laughs> um, is not the best all the time, especially since it's been so long since I've read some of these, but it actually wasn't that bad. So I'm pretty happy. <laughs> but I hope you all enjoyed watching this video. Let me know in the comments down below if there are any other challenges or tags or anything that you would like to see me do or if there's any other video that you'd be interested in seeing I'm always open to your ideas and suggestions if you'd like to watch my first version of this challenge I'll definitely be sure to leave it linked on the screen as well as down below so you can check it out there as well as the links to the original creators videos but again I hope you all enjoyed watching this video if you'd like to follow me on any of my social media all my links are in the description box as always but thank you so much for watching I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in my next video bye